Hey guys, Smith with Minute Maintenance coming at you from another winter wonderland. We got six inches of snow out of nowhere last night. Went from 50 degrees and tank top weather to below 30 and six inches of snow. And of course, with snow comes cold and with cold comes heat related issues in your car. Let's get a blend door actuator fixed this time on a 2010 Chevy Impala. All right, guys, today we're going to be working on this 2010 Chevy Impala with a 3.6 liter motor. Now, the owner reported to me that when she went to open the door and start a vehicle, she heard a clicking noise coming from under the dash. A click, 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 click. Constant noise coming from under her dash. And that's a telltale sign, guys. A clicking noise constantly when you're trying to work your vents, work your heat or your cold direct where the air is going from in your vehicle. Telltale sign, guys, that your blend door actuator is stuck it's not working appropriately and that's something you want to get changed sooner rather than later so that you have the appropriate heat otherwise you might not be able to defrost your window especially when out of the blue you get six inches of snow now fortunately on blender actuators tend to be fairly simple jobs to get to on this chevy impala there's actually two of them one on the driver's side and one behind the glove box on the passenger side and if you listen carefully for the clicking noise you should be able to determine which one is actually giving you your issues and i let's take a listen and see if we can figure out where it's coming from There's that noise. Definitely blend door actuator. And if you use your ears, you can hear it coming from inside the glove box as opposed to the driver's side blend door actuator, which is down here. You can distinctly hear it's coming from right there. We're going to get that remedied. Don't you worry about it. So now that we know what's coming from the passenger side of the vehicle, first thing you're going to want to do is get into your glove box, guys. Now, when you open up your glove box, make sure you clear it out because what we're going to do is we're actually going to drop this down. It's actually fairly simple to drop this glove box down. Right back here, there's a tab right there and one over there, basically a hook that catches the top end as it's rotating down. You can see those hooks back there that come up and they catch. All I got to do is put a little downward pressure on this on this part of the, the glove box and the lid there. See, I'm just pushing, just bending the plastic so that she slides right out. Let's focus up, and now that we're in the glove box, off to the left, this is the guy making all the racket, giving us such a hard time. Let's see if I can get this camera a little bit better angled for you. So it's this guy right here, and as you can see, it's fairly easy access to get to. Just one wiring harness right there that you remove, and then two bolts, top one up there and one on the bottom. So to get this job done, guys, you're going to need a 730 seconds socket there. I got a, a longer 730 seconds socket. Now, I am going to try to loosen up the two bolts and pull the actuator out towards me so I actually get that wiring harness off. Um, just given the gorilla mitts that I was born with, that God cursed me with these giant hands. Unfortunately, it's very difficult for me to get my fingers back there to actually release that wiring harness. So first thing I'm going to do is see if I can actually get that actuator out here towards me so i'm gonna start by putting on this bolt right here although it is fairly simple to get to it is does not make for the most thrilling of the videos so let's go ahead and work that top bolt set to lefty loosey we're not trying to go righty tighty that's for later and i apologize for my voice guys i was at a uh, rock concert Port Tornadoes and Iowa local rock cover band. They can rock out with their socks out all day long. And I couldn't help but sing along to the classic songs. And my voice is not with me anymore. If you guys happen to see it, because I've lost it, if you happen to see it, let me know. Drop it off at the P.O. box. It'd be greatly appreciated. Let's work that a little bit more. it off by hand all right so i went ahead and i got that top one out it sees it's not it's a flat bolt um it's kind of shaped like a sheet metal bolt but it goes into plastic so it actually grips fairly well given how deep those threads are so you really got to back it out with your implement before you can actually get it out by hand and our second bolt guys is going to be right there at the bottom Let's see if i can bend this little tab out of the way come on camera it's gonna be right down here oh gosh that's not helpful for you guys at all so if the top one is here it's going to be kitty corner doo, 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 down here. So if we're calling this top right, bop, 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 bottom left, same size bolt head, my middle finger 
is tapping it right now. My index finger is pointing at the first one we got out. Boom, boom. It's right back here behind this little, this little flap. But with the wrench, you should be able to jack onto it as well. Set to let the loosey. It's just hard to get the camera in this particular space. And here's a uh, question for you guys out there. Feel free to answer in the comments below. How many of you guys out there actually keep gloves in your glove box? I know I certainly don't. But that is what it's used for. That's what it's named after, but I've actually never seen a pair of gloves in a glove box. Oh, I don't know if you guys can see that, but it's starting to snow on me. That's not very fun. Unfortunately, you gotta be with the, you gotta be out here with the door open and on the working on the floorboard to be able to get in the glove box here. And you see where my wrench is, guys. Unfortunately, this is the only amount of space I can go. One quarter turn at a time. Take your time. No rush. This is an easy job. On a scale of one to ten, I'd give it a four and a half, just given the cramped space you have to work with. But something anybody can do at home with limited tools. I'm using one socket wrench and one socket. Finish back and let head off. Okay. Oh. Almost dropped off on me, so be careful when you start feeling it coming loose, guys. Put some some forward pressure, some forward pressure against it, so it doesn't drop down and get lost in a black hole back there, like my wrench is trying to do. Get back here, socket wrench, and that's the second bolt, second and last bolt. So we got one, two, and then it just pops right out. Just pull it right out towards yourself. Shimmy here a little bit. There we go. She comes right out. And now we gotta work to get that wiring harness off. And as you can see, now I got a lot more space to actually work to get that wiring harness off. And it looks like I'm going to have to lift up on this tab. I'll need two hands, but where my finger's pushing, you can see there's a little nub right here. I gotta push up on that tab, it looks like, to get it to release. So let's see if we can figure this out. All right, now that that's released, a little easier to show you. So you don't have to worry about this black, this blue part back here. Now I know if, uh, a lot of people who worked on cars before, there are wiring harnesses where there's a little pressure clip to help secure things where basically it looks similar to this and you pull up on it before things can release. But look at this design here. You see that basic, I'm gonna call it a mouth right there, this tab. I had to get my fingernails underneath of it and bend it open so that it would come up over that hook so my finger is touching into all right you see that, that little hook right there so you can use a small flat blade screwdriver or butter knife if that's all you have access to and just real gentle because this is plastic guys real gentle you just want to pull up on this tab so that you can bend it over here over that hook and now the blender actuator is removed so let's go ahead and find ourselves our replacement all right guys and so i have right here my brand new, couldn't get the sticker off all the way, Blendor actuator, and the old one. It's the old Blendor actuator. So the reason it was making a clicking noise, click, 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 is this thing actually spins. You hear that? It actually spins. There's only plastic teeth in here, guys. If I took this case apart, maybe I'll go ahead and do that. If I took this case apart inside, there's plastic teeth, and they get worn down over time because this thing is constantly turning, adjusting the heat and coolant temperature, adjusting the directionality of the vents, whether it's going to go to the defrost, come out the straight vents or out the floor. It, it has a big job. It has to move a lot for you because, as you guys know, you get hot and cold in your car. You're always adjusting your temperature, and this thing has to keep up. Some plastic gears they get worn down, and then they start to slip, and then you'll get that cack, 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 cack cacking noise which is a telltale sign of the blend door actuator so this is the passenger side one the driver's side one is right over here on the exact opposite side so we just did one right here behind the glove box the driver's side one is right here you just gotta remove this panel right here so you can reach over the inside and pull it out but it's the same process now when it comes to putting a new blend door actuator in i want you to look at the directionality let me see if i can set this up a little bit better look at the directionality of this of that hole there. Look how it's different from that one. If you can see that it's angled a little different. The new one is straight up and down. This one is canted to the left, diagonally to the left a little bit more. That's because that's the direct that is where the door is currently positioned. Now what that means is when we go to put the new one in, 
our holes to screw it in aren't going to line up appropriately because the whole thing's going to be canned sideways just so you can attach to the nub as opposed to this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put my wiring harness on the blend door actuator first before installing the screws. And I'm going to turn the key on the ignition and hopefully that'll allow this to rotate to the same position that this guy was. All right, guys, now I went ahead and I reinstalled the blender or actuator. So I reattached the wiring harness first, and then I'm going to pull this kit off. Hopefully, you guys can... Ah, these angles are just horrendous. Pull this out of the way. So you can see a piece of white back there, a piece of white plastic. Sticking out. Come on, focus up, camera. Be nice to me. Slide that out of the way that way. Maybe that'll help. Where are you? Maybe you can't see it, unfortunately. If I then push this a little bit. So you see that white knob right there? Boop, 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 where my finger's flexing? That is the part that this slips onto. And when this rotates, it spins that white knob, that nub, to go where it needs to be on the door. So actually, the new one wasn't too far off from where this one was. It's only a, a very slight degree. So when I rehooked the wiring harness, I was actually able just to slip the blender actuator onto everything. It didn't have any issues. It, so when you buy a blender actuator, it goes through a calibration process for you that comes with it with a manual that says, hey, what you're going to want to do is disconnect the negative battery, put your blender actuator in, then put the key into the run position. Don't turn it on. Put the key in the ignition to the run position. Reconnect the negative battery, and that should allow the blender actuator to actually adjust to the same level of this one, assuming the degree is so far off because this can do a full 360 spin. Thankfully, the new one actually wasn't that far off. It's just a slight degree, so I was actually able to just to put it on there and just shimmy it, and everything lined up just fine. Hopefully, I didn't just jinx myself, and I can do it all again. First things first, line up on the right nub, because that's the most important part. And then, we're there. Now, just reinstall the screws. And you want to go finger tight first. I'm going to go top right screw. Just because that's easier for you guys to get a visual on. And guys, we always start screws and bolts and nuts by hand, guys. If possible, always start by hand. There we go. Let's got to find the hole. There we go. Work it in by hand. Tight enough. And we'll go on with our tool and we'll finish it off. All right, now it's fully installed. And just to get the glove box back, all you do is just lift it right up. No need to bend the plastic, just she's back in place. And now moment of truth, is the noise gone? She is. And we are back to normal. Everything is functioning just fine. I'm looking at my, at my camera, I've seen a lot of flashing going on right here. I promise you in real life it's solid. It's just the camera picking up the, the digitalness of the of the screen there, so that doesn't actually mean anything. Nothing's actually taking place, but the noise from the blender actuator is now gone. So now we have a nice, quiet car, again, ready for all the heat and air conditioning all summer and winter long. All right, guys, and there you go. In a couple of minutes, in the snow, in the flurry, in the cold, we were able to knock out the blend door actuator removal and replacement on this vehicle. And again, there's two of them. If you're working on your own Chevy Impala and you hear that clicking noise, try to use your ears, try to use your hands to feel around the radio and the glove box, see if you can feel where the clicking is coming from, because there's one on the driver's side, the left of the radio, and one on the passenger side behind the glove box. The same process to get to both of them, same size bolts, same type of wiring harness, same part. So easy job for you guys to do at home. If you guys have any comments or questions, please drop those below. Please like and subscribe. And as always, take a minute out of your day, cold or not, to do some maintenance. We'll catch you next time.